So if you ever wondered how you go about adding in those navigation icons into your main menu inside WordPress, well today I'm going to show you how to do just that. Well, my name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If you want to be kept up to date with all the content we add every single week, consider hitting that subscribe button below and smashing that bell icon to become part of the WP crew to be notified every time new content is added. We've gone through the process of setting up WordPress, we've inserted our first menu, and now we're ready to start adding those icons. So let's just jump over to the dashboard of WordPress. I'm going to take you through the process of doing this right now. Now in this first example, I'm going to show you with Ocean WP how you don't actually need to install anything else. As long as you've got Ocean WP, the completely free theme, and Ocean Extras, which is the plugin that you need to have installed to start getting the best out of Ocean WP, you can do it very easily with nothing else. So we're in the dashboard, and all we're going to do is we're going to come out to the appearance section and we'll go into the menu section. I've already created a menu in here, and if we click and open these up, you'll see we don't have any option to insert icons, insert any CSS classes or anything else. And this is kind of true across the board, no matter what theme you're using. Most of these options are disabled by default. However, we can access all these extra options very easily. If we come to the top right hand side of the dashboard screen, you can see we have screen options. We click and expand. You can see we have a lot of different options available in there for us. The first is all the options we have down the left hand side, so the pages, the posts and so on, all the different items we can drag into our menu structure. But below that we've got show advanced menu properties, and this is where we can activate various different things. Now depending upon what theme you have installed, you'll see different things inside here. With Ocean WP, we have an option for icon. If we select that, we can close these down, and if we expand this out now, you can see we have a new section for icons. And in there, we can just simply come in, click select, and we can see the new font awesome browser, which allows us to go through and find any font that we want. So let's just say we want to insert the home on here. We'll click home. We can set our sizing. We can set any other values we want for hiding text, the position and so on. And then we say select. Once we've done that, you can see it shows us what the icon is going to look like. And if we hit save menu, and then we take a look at our page itself. So we come over to our site we'll see that now under our home section, our home page, we've now got the little home icon. So using Ocean WP, it's insanely easy to do this by adding these icons in from Font Awesome. Next, we're going to jump over to a different theme where this isn't an option, and I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing this. In this second example, I'm going to demonstrate it using the Astra theme. We're going to be using the free version, so there's no additional plugins part of Astra installed. This is just Astra free. All we need to do is come over to the plugin section and we're going to go through to add new. Now I've already gone and added this anyway, but let's come through to add new. And once we're in there, we're going to search for font awesome. We're going to let that filter through and we should find the first plugin on there is the font awesome plugin. Now you don't have to use this plugin if you don't want to. If you want to get in and edit the code of your functions.php file to reference the actual font awesome library, you can do that. For simplicity, I'm going to use the Font Awesome plugin. Now, this is developed by the people behind Font Awesome, so you know this is going to work flawlessly with WordPress. So, I've already installed it. I'm just going to activate it. Once we've activated it, that's going to link everything up, and we have some options we can go and pick and choose from. So, if we come down to the settings section, we've got Font Awesome as a new entry, and inside there, we've got a range of different options. We can choose the method, so we can choose either to use a web font or the SVG options. If you are a pro user of Font Awesome 5, then you can say requires subscription. You can click on there and use pro and you don't have access to a lot more icons. For this, we're going to leave it unchecked. We've then got version 4 compatibility. You can set that to require or forbid. It's up to you. Pseudo element support. If you want to enable that, you can do that. And you can also specify what version of Font Awesome 5 you want to work with. So we leave that as the latest, we leave those all disabled, and you can see we've also got remove unregistered clients, which again, we're going to leave that as is. Save changes, if you've made any changes on there, I'm going to leave it as is, because we've made no changes, so that we've done the first part. Now we need to go through and start taking a look at how we insert these into our layout. So what we're going to do, we're going to come up with the appearance section, we're going to come down to menus again. From inside here, if we expand any of these entries, you'll see we have just the navigation label and other other than some basic options, we have nothing more available to us. What we need to do is come to the screen options again, the top right hand side. This time we're going to enable CSS classes. That'll open up another option and we've got what we need inside there. Now at the moment I'm looking at the wrong menu structure, so I just need to come in here and say main menu and click on select. Once I've done that, I've got my main menu set up and now I can come in and I can edit any of these that I want. So we need some CSS classes to drop in there that'll reference the font awesome icons. So to do that, 
All we need to do is come over to the Font Awesome website, click at the search bar at the top, and for this, we're gonna say we want to have a home. And you can see we've got any icons now that are available. So anything that's black, we can use. Anything that's grayed out is part of the pro package. We can't use those. So we are limited. But we still have around 7,000 icons to choose from. So more than enough with just a free option. Let's click to choose that. And once we do that, that'll open up the actual icon itself. And we can take a look at the various different iterations there are for it, plus some other information. So you can see there's various different sizes you can see inside here. And if we look on the right hand side, we've got a preview of the free version that we've got at the top and then the pro versions underneath. What we're going to do though is we're going to say start using this icon. We're going to click to open that up and you can see this gives us some information. The most important is the first piece at the top. Now this is the HTML code that includes the CSS class and the CSS class is all that we need. So what we need to do is inside these speech marks we've got the class. We're going to select that, copy it and jump back over to our website. So to come back over to the website inside the menu setting and inside the CSS class, we're simply going to drop that code inside there. So save our menu and then we're going to preview our site. So we should now find that we've got an icon at the beginning of our home section. But you will notice that anything that's using an icon, any of these font awesome icons, the font has now changed. You can see the last four items are all using one font, whereas the first two which use using icons have a different font. So we need to sort that out. Now it's very, very easy to do. What we're going to do is jump back into our dashboard. We're going to come over to the customize option under the appearance section. And inside there, depending upon what theme you're using, you'll have an option for additional CSS. So this will show us a preview of our homepage. And you can see there's our icons. If we come to the additional CSS settings, we can come in here and we can now target those and we can reset that font. This is one of those little quirks and I'm sure there's other workarounds, but this I found to be quick and easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste in what I need. So I'm going to copy and paste inside there and you can see once I do that, that now resets those fonts. Now I can edit the, the sort of styling on there and so on. You can see the weight is slightly different, but I just want to show this for brevity on, on exactly what's going on. So what I've done is I've found out what the main section at the top, which is our header area, it's a list item and it's a link, so it'll only target those relevant things. Then we set the font family. And anything else I want to set inside CSS could be done inside there. Now, if you want to make changes like this, but you're not really comfortable with CSS, I'd recommend taking a look at a plugin like CSS Hero. It will allow you to simply visually edit anything on your page using CSS, all inside a customizer style interface. It's very easy. There's tons of videos on the channel, and I'll put a link in the description below so you can take a look at that and see if it's something you'd be interested in. However, if you are comfortable working with CSS, you can simply target this and then make any changes you want, depending upon the theme, the styling, and so on. So it's one of those little quirks that is a little annoying. It's not the end of the world. It does take a little bit of a work around, but once you've done it, once you've got this code in place, if you're using the same theme, you can simply copy paste this in and then just edit what you need to for the font family size and so on. So there we go. That's how easy it is to start adding in your icons into your menu structure in WordPress. It's all very simple and straightforward. Now speaking of simple and straightforward, if you'd like to learn more about WordPress in a simple, straightforward fashion, consider taking a look at some of these links you can see on screen right now. They're going to get you up to speed and teach you a whole lot of really cool things you can do with WordPress. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we've covered or you'd like to see covered in future videos, please consider dropping those in the comments section below. I'd love to get your feedback. As always, all the applicable links are in the description and I've been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.